featuring D'Addario's proprietary NY steel wire and our impossibly thin protective coating, XS Electric lets you bend further and play longer with a sound that stays timeless. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Perry with Premier Guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee at the Ryman Auditorium with this dude. You know this guy, Scott Ian. Hi, how are you? Fucking at the Ryman. At the Ryman. I know. Dude, how are you going to get caught in the mosh with all these pews, bro? This is going to be a, a little bit tricky. <laughs> I'm I'm actually, I would really love to see people diving off, off of the, the pews. Yeah, me too. <laughs> like, I don't know if we'll ever get asked back, but it, it would be worth it. Man, you know, we do a lot of shoots here, obviously, because we're based in Nashville, Chris and I, and I think this is probably like the first real heavy show I've ever Is this the first metal show at the Ryman? I might have seen the Deftones here, but that's about as heavy as it gets. You right. Know, but like... It's got to be the first thrash metal oh, show. Let's yeah, see. yeah, okay. without question. Cool. So, and maybe some hardcore because we got hate. Hate breed is too. with you too. So yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. never been anything that heavy. We're breaking story. lots of ground here tonight. <laughs> All right, well let's uh, let's get this party started because you got a bunch of sick Jacksons. Um, you've been with Jackson, back with Jackson for quite a while now, and yeah, yeah, got a whole boat of them, dude. Let's take a look. Um, we do have a whole boat. What's your number and one? I, I feel very professional because we've got. I've actually got a vault out on this tour, and uh, so the guitars are very happy to get to live in this this big giant case. So what's my number one? That's an interesting question because they're all kind of, you know, they all serve their their purpose out here. Even even the understudies, you know, <laughs> I couldn't do it without them. But uh, I mean, I start the show with this guy, which they they built this one for me, probably about. Oh, as I bang it into the thing. Um, they built this one for me. I don't know, it's gotta be going on two years already, something like that. And when it showed up, uh, you know, custom shop build. Um, uh, yeah, just- it's all tricked out, man, you yeah. get a F-U-Tone, Yeah, I've everything. got I've got Adam Reaver's handiwork on this guitar, the F-U-Tone Floyd. Uh, it feels great. It, this one just sounded so great right out of the case. I mean, you, you just know, look, there, Jackson's, there's always like, you know, they're always, they always sound good. It's never like I get one and I'm like, huh? You know, they, they always sound good. And then you get ones that sometimes they pop out of the case and you just hit that first like kind of chunk of a chord and it's like, oh shit. That's the one. Like you just, it just happens, you know? And um, I love it's got the OG logo on this one. You probably took close up shots of all that stuff, but um, yeah, just feels great. Sounds amazing. Looks great. I've got the, you know, Baldini on the back of the neck. I like to say that's actually the secret to the tone right there. Um, <laughs> that and the, of course, the the uh, Iron Maiden wristbands that cover my wireless packs. This one's got Adrian Smith on it. Of course, Adrian's got great tone, so you know. Um, that's got to contribute. Yeah, to it the totally tone. rubs yeah. off uh, on the guitar. <laughs> so yeah, I start the show with this, and then sometimes, well, I used to come back to it at the end, but then I wanted to get more of my friends involved, so um, stopped coming back to this one at the end of the show, so I'd be able to play this guy more during the set. Love this guy. Oh, banging these headstocks. <laughs> yeah, obviously, you know, tribute to Daryl yeah, yeah. with the, uh, the dime slime finish. It's a little different, obviously, than than his. Avocado burst, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> avocado burst, I never, I never thought of that. Avocado, that's, that's the new name, Avocado Burst. Um, Adam Reaver from F.U. Tone is actually coming to Philly on this run to do matching parts to the Floyd to match the green Oh, sick, and like anodized or something like that? Yeah, yeah, he's got colors. He sent me pictures, and I said, hey, because I see all the time in his post, he's got all these crazy purple and blue and red. Yeah. And I said, you got ones that'll match this? He said, hell yeah, so he's, he's going to hook it up for me. Yeah, I guess so. I guess maybe I would call this one my number two in a good way. Um, yeah, again, you know, uh, these things just, they sound the way I need them to. You know, it, there's, it's not a big difference in tone between this one and the white one I, I just showed you. Um, 
I feel like this one maybe has a little bit more bottom end hmm. uh, going on. Why? I, I don't know, because they're, they're same wood. Same, I was going to you know, say, as far as construction, it's all yeah, mahogany, yeah. right? Yeah, same thing. So, you know, just little things here and there can affect it. Um, you know, maybe the difference is that one's been FU toned and this one hasn't, hasn't? yet. I, I, I don't know. All right, so speaking of that, let's give Adam some love because I, I've noticed a lot of players really gravita gravitating towards FU toned stuff now. Is it... Are, is the difference that you're noticing in the tone like a sustained thing? Because it's he uses uh, yeah. odd metals like titanium and brass. And all sure, that shit, right? definitely sustain. Uh, 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 there's a punch, especially when you get that big brass block going mm -hmm. on in the in the back. There's like a, a a punch. Which guitar was it that he did that? It totally like changed the sound of the guitar. Made it so much better because it, it, it didn't sound that good. And then the white one, the, the judge. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, we'll get to that one. Yeah, Adam's just, he's the Floyd wizard, man. Yeah. It's just like, you know, he takes something good or he, even, he takes something great and just like right. takes it to a whole nother place. Better mousetrap, man. I mean, because yeah. Floyd's can be notoriously kind of a pain in the ass. Sure. Especially if you don't have a locking nut or whatever, you know. Um, um, I'm sure where, having a case helps. Where do we want to go next? Um, show this one. I used this one for two songs in the set. Uh, Actually, no one song right now, right? It was two songs. We were doing Devil You Know, and we were doing Keep It In The Family. Uh, so I had this one set up in a drop C sharp tuning. Uh, it just sounds really great in that tuning. Uh, this one dropped for some reason. Sounds better than the other guitars dropped. So we've been using this one for the lower tuning. And obviously, you could tell who this is an homage to, my friend Rick Nielsen. Uh, I'm a huge fan of his and Cheap Trick and have been since I was a kid and uh, always loved his Checkerboard Explorer, just one of my favorite guitars on the planet. I got actually got to play it one time when I, I played off Wiedersehen with them at the Greek Theater and he asked me to jam with them and he said, what guitar do you want to use? And I was like, duh. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I can't play the five neck, I'll, I'll, yeah, spin that I'll settle for the Checkerboard. Um, What's his setup yeah. like? Was it, would it, you know, did it? Anything strike you weird about his no, guitars? No, it felt great. Felt great. Yeah. yeah, and it sounded great too. Mm -hmm. Just you know, I think I was playing straight through a Marshall. It sounded awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this was my homage to that, and you know, they even obviously did the the pickups, everything. You know, I was like, I just basically just make me a guitar that Rick would be proud of, and he, he's seen it. Has he and, seen it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, he's seen it, and uh, he was thrilled. He he was very excited that uh, that uh, you know uh, I'm paying such a an awesome tribute yeah. and uh and it's even it's even the age like it's not like it's an old guitar yet but i could even tell that the what you know it's starting to slowly slowly age because it's even not as white yeah. as it used to be which is which is of course what uh, i'm hoping will happen over the next 20 years and uh yeah i mean if i i hate picking favorites but if i you know if if someone came up to me in an alley and stuck a gun to my head and I said, hey, take my wallet, here's my watch. And they said, no, which one is your favorite guitar on tour right now? I would, I would probably pick this one. Yeah. It's just, come on, how nasty. cool is that? <laughs> Sick. So are you running a, like a, a pretty consistent uh, pickup um, in all of these? Is it they all have Duncan JBs. Okay, yeah. so he, Chris and I were actually just talking about this. A JB's an awesome sounding pickup. A lot of metal dudes use a JB's, but what is it about a Jeff Beck pickup that metal dudes gravitate towards? Like, I started using it in the 80s, I think just based on the fact that the first Jackson I ever owned, I, I ordered a custom shop Jackson in 82, and uh, it had a JB in it, and it sounded great. Sure. And I, so that was it for me. Uh, I never, I never, I've had other pickups in, Guitars like I've got one of those Charvel SC1s, and that came with a DiMarzio in it. And I was like, I gotta change yeah. it. It just that's not sounding right. For not me. your thing. Yeah. And yeah. maybe for someone else, that's the tone they want, but it's not. It didn't didn't work for me. Right. Um, well, and obviously, you, know, you guys will see in a second. You're getting all the gain you could yeah. ever want from your amps. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I find. Look, I I have a very clean, heavy tone. Um, my you know my tone. You hear every note in a chord I'm playing. Um, everything rings, everything sings, and it, I think the JB really kind of helps that happen because it is, you know, it's not wound extra, extra, extra. I don't need any of that, right. you know. Although I am working on another signature pickup with Duncan right now, and uh, of course, based off uh, 
everything I love about the JB, um, but making it work even better in the combination with the EVH amps. Interesting. Yeah, okay. because I was like, hey, maybe with the pickup, we could fix something that I'm not liking about the EQ and the EVH and maybe, and I, I think we, f we figured that out. Damn. Yeah. So was that just a, a series of them sending pickups back and forth and you kind of trying it out? And Actually, no. Our stage right tech, Jeff, had a custom wound Duncan that I plugged in his guitar and it was a lot I loved about it. And I, so I called up Brian at Duncan and, and uh, sent him literally at Jeff had the like picture of his custom order and uh, sent that in. It turns out MJ at Duncan did the pickup for him so she knew exactly what, what it was yeah, what it so was cool. and then so what we made some tweaks to that they were fedex to me in florida and we're there late so i'm supposedly getting them now in detroit and we'll be able to plug them in and and hear what the sound that like. rules yeah, yeah jeff is awesome shout out to jeff and to sworn enemy his fucking awesome band if you yes. haven't heard him definitely check them out um cool so i think we got through just yeah, about everything few, i mean for, i'd be remiss if i didn't show show you know i may this one's been around a long time, um, since worship music at yeah. least, because uh, it's I had it made. It's my in the end guitar, and uh, that song is you know our tribute to to Ronnie James Dio and and Daryl, and oh, cool. uh, so I had this one custom painted uh, by uh, Nub Graphics, and uh, yeah, you know just it's uh, it's a beauty. I play it every night for in the end. Uh, we brought that song back into the set for this run and uh, also tuned down, drop C sharp. Um, yeah, love it. Yeah, that's it's, sick. It's the only soloist I'm playing during the show, um, but I, I feel like, you know, works works sonically and, uh, and it just kind of obviously visually really stands out. Yeah, it's beautiful. And kind of from a bird's eye view, I noticed that's a, a pretty b big boy string on there. Are you compensating with bigger gauges for the lower tunings or? Not like I used to. Yeah. Um, I found that, uh, well, on the lower tunings, a little bit heavier. Where are we using 40? 10, oh, really? Right. So on the lower tunings, I'm using 10 to 52. I used to play heavier, 1156. Even at one point, I was using like 12 to 60 because I was too much work. Dude. I was like, <laughs> I want to be like Malcolm. And, uh, but Malcolm plays in ACDC. And they're, <laughs> it's, yeah. you know, it's a totally different style of, Playing and when you got a 60 and you're trying to play some of the stuff we're playing, it's it's not. I was chewing, my hands were getting chewed up, bet, like dude. it was crazy, and uh, my wrist, everything was hurting. And uh, on this tour, actually, I went back to nine to 42 for the everything we're doing in standard, because that's how all those songs were recorded in the 80s. I was sure. using nine to 42, and that's the sound and the tone. And I found as I was getting heavier in your gauges, it was taking away from the tone and the edge. Mm. Um, it's not the same strings I was using. And I could, I hear it when I'm playing right. those nines now. Right. Plus, um, it's so much, they're easier to play. Oh, so much just easier. in general, yeah. the, the down picking, everything is just so much easier. For a long time, there's been that whole argument and with lower tuned uh, instruments, like, you know, the fatter the gauge, maybe the better the tone. But by the time you're running through fucking, you know, all this right. stuff like well like if we were it, playing it you know look if we were playing in in you know c standard or drop b or drop a yeah, or, or those kind yeah, of tunings sure. of course i would have to use it would be impossible with nines just flop around yeah <laughs> uh, of course um but we, we don't have it the lowest we have is the drop c sharp and and the uh, 52s they hold tuning easily yeah yeah, you don't have any problems with breakage or anything like that? No. Nah, well, they're locked a, down and shit. Well, I'm not, I don't want to jinx anything, but... <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> I have not broken a string on, on this yeah. tour yet. Well, all right, so we got a couple more to get through. Um, that Karina one, I think I've seen on your Instagram a bunch, and that's just a cool build. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, I mean, that this is, is like... Nasty. It's like a piece of fine furniture right here. <laughs> it really, it's like art. I mean, look at this thing. Yeah, solid Karina, just... I mean, even the like the figuring on the neck and the, like just the way the neck, everything about it. Um, does it sound? I mean, tonally, does it sound a little different to you because it's a different yeah, wood? Yeah. 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 It's uh, it's warmer, uh, um, for sure. Also, sounds really great in drop tunings. Um, it's resonant. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I remember when I had this in the studio, it wasn't working so much for me for the for really fast stuff. Um, but on songs that were, say, more mid-tempo, this thing sounded, sounded awesome. Uh, yeah, and it, it just, f 
feels great too. I mean, when you, you dig in on, on some chunky chords on this one, it, it, it really shows up. Yeah, man, that thing's Great nasty. guitar. Super cool. And then I think we saw like a mirrored. Um, yeah, that's, that's the newest one uh, in this batch. I did two of these. I only have one of them out. I did, uh, I did one with Floyd, one without Floyd. Um, yeah, I just always wanted a mirror top. <laughs> so sick, yeah. And uh, I saw they had done one, like a custom shop build, and I immediately texted Mike Tempesta at Jackson, and, uh, and I said, I got to have a mirror, got to have it. And, uh, you know, a year later, because this was like at some point during COVID and, and uh, where everything was just taking forever. But, uh, yeah, well worth the wait. Mm -hmm. Uh, they did such an incredible job um, on this. Just Man. looks such a beauty. I play this during the show on a couple. I think I use it on Madhouse and Metal Thrashing Mad. And uh, yeah, it's it's just it's every much a ripper of a guitar as it looks. <laughs> and that front couple rows just loves you for blinding them with that thing. <laughs> you know, we did we did have lasers out. Oh shit! Uh, on the tour initially, and I said, wait, it, so. Am I gonna get in trouble like Blue Oyster Cult, like yeah. back in the day or something? Like, am I am I gonna blind people? Um, yeah, I, I love this thing. I mean, come on, who doesn't love a mirrored guitar? Look at that yeah, thing. That's so nasty. I also noticed, man, your necks are fat, dude. It's almost like classical guitar or something. Yeah. Like they're well, really broad. Is kinda, that something you're asking for? Or is that well, just well? A... You know, yeah. I mean, they've obviously got my specs. Right. Um, what I like, and they're all based off of that original Rhodes that I right. bought in 82. Like, it's just, that's always been the neck for me on a V. Um, it just works for me. On my soloists, like, uh, a lot of my soloists, they, they're thinner than this. Uh, they're not as big and they're a bit faster. But for some reason on the V, I, I just, I like the way yeah. this feels. Right on, man. What a fun, fun job you have. <laughs> so rad. I think, I, yeah, I, tell dude. me about it. What? That's exactly it. What a fun job I have. <laughs> and for, you know, for a tour as big as this, I mean, you guys are out. This is huge, dude. It's, it's kind of mind blowing to me that your rig is pretty straightforward. There's not like a huge complicated switching system or anything like that. You're running the EVH 5150 is one of my all time favorite fucking amps. The EL34. The three yeah. and the 34. So what is it about the 34 that you like more than the 6L6? Is it more of a give it more of that kind of classic metal sound or is it a little warmer than a 6L6? Cause 6L6 can get a little um, maybe ice picky or zippy, you know? I feel end. like these, these things growl like a Harley. They fucking scream, dude. They're yeah. like a Harley when it's like sitting at a red light and then when you give it some gas and you go, uh, that's what, that like compared to all his heads, all of the heads EVH has put out, I think they all, I've, I've got them all since the first white ones they built. And uh, um, these to me just, man, they're just angrier, uh, growlier, ballsier, everything about it. I mean, uh, Paul Crook was out with us for a few days. He you know, used to be in Anthrax in the 90s and he's a guitar and a, just a gearhead. And he came on stage and I just hit one chord and he's like, oh my God, oh, he's like flipping the fuck out. So it's just, I love when I, get yeah. that reaction to someone hearing just one E chord. It's, it's funny, that's ring. always been my reaction. Since I was a kid, my first real amp was a block letter. And it was like, holy fuck, how come amps don't sound like this? Yeah, you it's, know? Just, like, it's just such really a it. Yeah. punch in the fucking face, man. I mean, it does it to me every night. It makes me so happy. Yeah. I, the first chord of the set, we hit this big E chord, and then we go in Among the Living, and that whole intro is just, I mean, crunch crunch chunk 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 so nasty yeah. caveman 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 and it, it just makes me so fucking happy yeah. and it just sets the no pun intended sets the tone for the rest of the sure. night for me because i'm just jigging in gung 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 and it's literally pushing me in the back yeah. and um you know there's nothing like moving air like yeah. that and uh yeah, I love it so yeah. much. That's why people like, you're smiling so much on stage. I'm like, because my rig sounds so good. Totally. <laughs> and I, I'll show you guys a picture as close up as best I can. But man, your game is pretty not rocking. I mean, I it, told it, you, very clean. It, dude, yeah. And it's in channel two. I'm not using channel three. Oh, so you're in the crunch channel. Yeah, yeah. I'm in channel two, which you know, obviously is way cleaner than, sure. than channel three. Well, and uh, it just, 
I, I don't need all, I don't, Channel 3 for me gets too, it's too gainy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I lose, I I lose so much of the sure. clarity. I'm like, look, if I was ripping solos, I would be switching to Channel sure. 3. But uh, um, yeah, Channel 2 works Dude. so well for me. It It's just the combination of the, the guitar and the pickup and the amp, my hand, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it's so clean, but it has it has that right amount of edge, obviously, that still keeps it you know, metal. <laughs> yeah, man. And another huge leg up with these is, you know, I'm sure you played the early, you know, the block letter and the uh -huh. iterations after that. One trick pony, awesome gains stage, but man, the cleans fucking sucked. And these are awesome, especially with the 34s, man. You kind of yeah. get the best of both worlds. It sounds great. Yeah. It, everything about it. I, I put this up to heads that cost twice as much. Oh, yeah. You know, and I, I'll crush it, yeah. you know. I, 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 simple as that. Yeah, dude. Well, speaking of the clean channel, I know on this particular tour, you're not playing a ton of clean stuff. But when yeah, you Yeah, right now, it's literally just the intro to Antisocial. Balls to the balls, everything. No, <laughs> not, not even. No, not even. There's no clean in the set right now. Really? Yeah, yeah there's, so just no, there's not even clean in the set. <laughs> That's awesome. In the event that you were going to play clean, though, you're, you do have a setup for a, a clean sound, which is just a little uh, delay. Yes. Um, yeah, there's chorus. some delay, a little bit of chorus. Um, I did just get this Dunlop flanger that I want to, uh, the EVH flange that I want to plug in. We haven't we haven't been able to plug that in yet because uh, I'm not using a clean sure. sound. Yeah. But I'm thinking I might want to use that flange anyway in the context of some of the heavy tones in, in a couple of places. So. Uh, it's a cool texture for sure. Yeah, yeah, and it's fun at the end of a, especially if you're blowing up a big harmonic or something. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to hit that flanger. Oh, yeah, and, good call. Yeah. Right on. And then I guess kind of the last piece of the puzzle is just a walk. Yeah, for my uh, my big solo in Got the Time, I, I get to play the guitar solo in Got the Time. And uh, yeah, you probably recognize whose wah that is. Yeah, yeah. My friend Kirk. Uh, I love this wah. I love the color of it. it especially it, it matches, matches, the, yeah. it matches my slime. And uh, yeah, and for those asking, just like I did, why is the battery on the outside? Uh, it's because it gets changed every day and what a pain in the ass. Armando changes it every day. It would be a huge pain in the ass for him to have to take this all apart and change the battery. So it's right there on the outside. So yeah, there's my wah for my big solo. <laughs> I love it, dude. I also, I'll also kick the wah in. Uh, for lots of kind of, yeah, like dive bomb stuff and blah, sure. blah, blah, like like lots of great noises. and It's fun for that stuff Absolutely. Too. So the one thing you don't see out front here, my secret weapon that I'm running uh, through the effects loop on the EVH is uh, the Fort and Zool noise gate. So sick. Those yeah, things are amazing. I, you know, I've been through, I've tried everything and some of them were good uh, over the years. Some of them were terrible. And then Mike shows up with the Zool and it, out of the box, just like yeah. solves every noise problem uh, I, I have. I, I'm so confident and feeling good about the fact that when I walk on stage, even if my volume is full up and I'm on the mic doing a backup vocal and I, I stop playing or something because, you know, we, we drop out for a vocal part or something, let's say, I don't even have to roll it off. I could just stop yeah. and nothing's going to happen. Dude, it's, he really nailed it with those things because I've had a fucking hate, hate relationship with any kind of noise depression for years, you know, NS2, fucking ISP decimators and stuff. Sure, they I used I used all of those. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. you have to, you know what I mean? But like, fuck, do they kill you? You know, it just, uh, it feels like the, it, getting governed. It doesn't, the Zool does not change the tone in any way, shape or form. It doesn't eat your tone. Like it just, you know, can't say enough about it. Mike, Mike yeah. Fortin is a genius. He really is, man. Shout out to Mike for that. Those Shout out to are Mike. Sick. All right, while I'm looking at them, picks. What, do you, what, do you, what kind of picks are you rolling with? Because these have a texture on them. Is that from a, um, a razor? Or Armando is that, uses they... like a, you use an awl, right? Like a... Just so they don't slip out of your yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I got this from Daryl. Yeah. Uh, Daryl was the first person to I ever saw. Yeah, he just he's using just like a, a Jesus little blade. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, Daryl's picks, Grady, Grady Dimes Tech used to score Daryl's picks, uh, you know, way back when. So at some point in the 90s, uh, I started doing it too because it just felt, it felt so good, you know. And especially, you know, obviously it, it keeps the pick from falling out sure. of my fingers. So it's, it's actually extremely functional. I can only play with these picks. Like even at home, if I'm just like sitting, dicking around and there's just a regular pick, I, it's like I feel, I pick it up, I'm like, Oh, I, I gotta go find one with, 
with the, or I, I go get something sharp and I do it myself. But um, yeah, I'm so addicted to this. I, they have to be scored. And it's, yeah, Diodario makes these and I think they're point eighty eights. Um, yeah, nothing. Yeah. Nothing fancy. Are you, and, and as far as string brand, what are you running? Do you Diodario. Know? Cool. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, which, which current, the, um, NYXL. Yeah, yeah, and those seem to be Diodario NYXLs. Yeah. They, they feel great. They sound great. Um, they last a long time too. I've had a couple sets that lasted quite a while. Yeah. Mine get, I gotta change them every show. They get, every show you change them. Yeah, because yeah. they get, you get sweaty. They and get stuff, beat sure. the shit. I beat the shit out of them. And, uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, and they get gross. Yeah, you know, um, I they don't feel good if you know. Even after a couple songs, I'll no, I'll even notice. I told Armando towards the beginning of this tour when I was I start the show with that first white one I showed you earlier for a couple songs, and then I was going back to that one at the end of the set, and I you told him tell. I said it feels tired. Like this hmm. guitar does not. I need to go to a fresh guitar at the end because it's making me work harder. Yeah. Because the guitar just is like already like, oh, this thing feels beat. Well, you're not banging out fucking open chords either. No. <laughs> you're thrashing, and we're like, <laughs> you're ending the show with Indians, and it's yeah. one of the hardest songs to play. So I, I don't want the guitar working against me. Right, right. You know? Totally get it. Well, dude, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time to walk us through all this stuff. Of course. Love looking at your stuff. Love looking at your Instagram. Speaking of your Instagram, we have a sister show called The Drum Rundown that we got to get your kid on because that dude fucking beats drums, dude. Revel would love to Man, do it. I loved I'm watching sure. you guys do turnstile do and fucking, you know. Awesome. Slayer, so cool. Mastodon, yeah. Slayer. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, he's a great guitar Sepul player too. Sepultura. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you so much. We're going to go talk to the rest of the guys. Thank cool. you. All right, guys, now we're on the other side of the stage over here with John, and hopefully if we have enough time, we'll get to Frank too, because uh, they both have uh, some new signatures uh, to talk about that are pretty sick. You might recognize this handsome fellow from Shadows Fall. He's been doing this band almost a oh, decade now, It'll right? be 10 years soon, real That's soon. fucking crazy. I know, wow. it's crazy. I know, time flies when you do this. Right, and for, dude, that had to have been like the best possible scenario. Like, <laughs> Yeah, if you would have told me when I was a kid that it'd be playing an anthrax, I wouldn't yeah, believe it. Dude, I, wouldn't, oh, I wouldn't think it'd be possible. And then um, Shadows Fall has been recently doing some reunion shows, right? Yeah, we, we did a reunion in December. That went awesome. And we have two more shows coming up September, Furnace Fest and Blue Ridge Festival. And uh, we'll see what, where it goes from there. You dude. know, we're having fun. When I'm home, we're jamming once a week, getting together. It's awesome. Or when Jason's home, too. He's yeah. out with Overkill a lot. So um, we've just been jamming again and having a good time. How fun is that, dude? Yeah. All right, and even more fun than that is a signature fucking guitar. That I is so know. Sick, I love this guitar. Man, it's slick. Yeah. I love the top. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, quilted maple top, mahogany back. Very, very cool. And then Fluence Moderns, right? Yep. Love the love the Fishman pickups. Uh, maple neck. It's a thin C neck. So. Oh, nice little volute. Yeah. Nice little shred neck. Spurzel tuners on the back. USA Hip Shop Bridge. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I love it, man. Now, uh, what, what pickups were you running like during Shadows Fall days and stuff like that? Because I was EMGs for most yeah. of Shadows Fall. Okay, so me too. And I noticed when I first uh, tried Ken Susi from Unearth actually mm -hmm. talked me into getting some of the, uh, the the moderns. And at first, I was like, oh, this is different. But now yeah. I think I really like it. There's so much clarity. Yeah, like, that's the, that's what I found. The difference was was a little bit more clarity than my EMGs. So right. Um, Right away, I fell in love with the moderns. So, if someone was to buy your signature from Dean, it would come yep. with the moderns. Gonna, gotcha. Yep, exactly. And then, what else did you work with them on, as far as like uh, you know specs, like a? So you know. everything are my specs except you know this is their exile body, mm -hmm. and we just went off that. I wanted a, a little bit of a thinner neck, so it's a thin C neck. Yeah, but it's, it's not pretty, too thin. It's not too thin. But uh, it, it it feels great. I love the feel of maple. Yeah. Um, plus, with maple necks too, when you're playing, it's much easier to see. <laughs> right, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. We've got a crazy light show yeah. going on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they just did an amazing job. I love the finish. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, so it's perfect for me. Uh, I keep the knob out of the way because I play with my hands like that. So originally I had a toggle switch in the first one, the first one in there. My first. Was it like a prototype and you had to move yeah, it? Yeah, I thought I was going to dig it, but my hands kept it. smashing yeah. it. So I went back to what, I've, what I'm used to. And it's always been my problem with the Les Paul. Yeah. The fucking toggle up there, I'm always going to hit that. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and you know, this has a good cutaway, so you can get up. It's, it's a nice. bolt down, but you can, you can get up there yeah. easily. 24 Way frets. Up there, yeah. Stainless steel frets. Yeah. That's a pretty guitar. Yeah. And so as far as production runs, are they doing multiple colors or? So right now it's this one, and then I have a black one in here. So those are the two we have right now. Right now you can just um, order them from the USA Custom Shop. You have to go through a Dean dealer. But hopefully next year there'll be an import, import model. model. Cool. Yeah. 
That'll be real cool. Yeah, that's a slick looking guitar, dude. Thank you. All right, before we move on to your amp situation, um, let's talk picks and strings. What do you got going on? So for the picks, I use the Dunlop Sharps. Big boys. Yeah, I love these. Um, I totally changed the way I played because of these. No shit. But I, but I played at such an angle that now when I play with a regular pick, I can't get any definition because I just, but this pick, I yeah, love. Yeah, the Sharps are nice. Yeah, I've been playing the Sharps since, I think, 2007 maybe. I recently got turned on to those and if yeah. you're playing any kind of- They're hard to go back yeah. once you start, yeah. Those are sick. And then strings, what Strings you are DRs, tight fit. I've been playing DRs for, I think, 20 years now. I love them. Dude, uh, eights? Yeah, so eights are for E standard. Okay. And the nines are for E flat. But gotcha. I love the, yeah, you, the, you the slinkiness. You want the fuck yeah. out of Billy Gibbons, that yeah. shit. Dude. And I hardly ever break strings, but like the first two days of this tour, I, Did you? I just, the end of Indians, I was just going for I it. I was actually trying to. And Bob, <laughs> I try to every night now, but. Dude, with H, you should be able to get <laughs> up to the very like top. like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty. All right. Super cool. And then as far as the rest of your rig, it's pretty simplified. I guess, you know, on a tour this big, you kind of want to be able to. Yeah, even quickly. though I have Kemper, I'm only using three patches. Right. I got a lead, clean, and rhythm. And a pretty simple on this wah, I absolutely love because it's switchless. Oh, so, so no click. Dunlop. Yeah. And I love that because there's so many times you'd be fighting that click. So like, do these yeah. engage as soon as you touch exactly. it? Exactly. Oh, that's I sick. love it. Yeah. So if you just plan an improv real fast, you just click it on it and it goes. And then. Then we have a fort and gate over sure, here. Sure, those are great. Yep. Now, what did the Kemper not have that you really needed the, the um, screamer for? It just gives it a little, a little extra, yeah. a little extra something. That makes but, perfect sense. And then what amps are you modeling inside of the Kemper? Uh, a Rivera. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. stock Rivera in there. No shit. So I, I go in between that and a stock angle. Oh, uh, okay. What angle? Uh, I'm sure they have the a different name for it. Fireball, I think. The fireball, yeah. yeah, yeah, those are cool. Right on, pretty mean and lean. And so are you this controller on stage with you or are you doing the switches yeah i have this and then jeff has another one back here just somewhere. for redundancy yeah sure. but he usually does the changes um unless it's something like they throw in a song that he's not too familiar with or something yeah so. well damn dude i can't believe uh i'm talking to you while you're in anthrax this is yeah. so fucking awesome i'm gonna try to get frank but man thank you so awesome. much thank yeah, you have a great tour all right last but not least we got frank who's got a signature uh bass why is the himself? bass player always last man well, why does it happen like that i'm tired of being treated like the last guy God dude damn i'm it. sorry no, it's okay. you, you were eating lunch or something i was <laughs> i was actually getting ear molds I, last night here's a quick thing on tour i have um i took my in ear out last night right put it down here head banged a little bit i it came up, I oh, thought it chipped my no. tooth. I got freaked out, pulled it out, smashed it like a nut. I didn't realize I smashed the fucking thing. So I had to get new molds. Oh, <laughs> shit. It's gonna be a couple of days, but I, that's a, some of the things uh, that are fun on tour. So tonight I might not be able to hear. I was gonna say, like, what are you gonna do tonight? Just do one monitor, try Take to do it. a wedge or something? It's just bass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm playing. <laughs> I said it before you did. Yeah, right on. I'm playing. That's funny. Well, you got a slick new uh, bass here. Signature. Yes. Beyond I, having a signature Charvel bass, it's, yes. you got signature pickups too. Signature pickups, yeah. yes. I'm very proud. I'm very proud to be the first signature artist artist of uh, Charvel basses. Uh, I'm the first one. And uh, yeah, we I can't from, say I've ever actually no, seen a Charvel bass. We went, we went from soup to nuts. They didn't. They never said no to me about everything I wanted. We got the popular wood, the, the maple neck, my. EMG, which I'm very, very proud of, my EMG signature, Frank Bellow signature pickups. Look them up on EMG.com. I sound like a selling point, but I'm not, not a salesman. Um, this is everything that I asked for in a bass. Oh, so um, if you haven't checked this bass out, it's reasonably priced for all players. So uh, check it out. There's, there's two models. Uh, there's the custom shop model, which I'm playing. And I also have uh, the foreign version, which is awesome. And I play that, I recorded with it. So um, Damn. they're doing good things at Charvel, mm -hmm. to say the least. Okay, a couple things right yeah, out of the please. gate. Mm -hmm. Brass nut. Brass nut for the sustain, ah. right? The sustain is everything in this, specifically this type of music I play. So it gives you that extra little sustain that I, that I need, I love, and I long for. So that was one of my first things that they were kind enough to do. So, That's so cool. Yeah, the, this mirror pick art you might notice, I'm a Phil Lynott fan from Thin Lizzy. So uh, this Who is my trip. Yeah, of course, <laughs> right? Everybody should be. If you don't know Thin Lizzy, please listen to them. Um, it was my tribute. I've always wanted this bass. Uh, I've had this bass in my mind for at least 10 years. So uh, my friend Mike Tempesta from um, Charvel Jackson, uh, EBH, uh, he made it possible. Everything I asked for, and it was great working with him and just bouncing off of him. 
they, those people uh, working there, they just know their stuff, and I'm, I'm very, very proud. This thing, and it's been on tour now, it's, it's getting its ropes, it's getting, it's getting its, its feet. It feels so good, it's lighter for me. I'm, you know, it's got the poplar wood, which is great. Got a great sustain to it. Uh, everybody who tries this bass doesn't want to put it down. And I, I have to say that everybody on this tour who's tried that said, what's your new bass? Fucking great. I love that, man. So pretty stoked about what's happening with the Charvel. Very cool, man. Yeah, yeah, I dig it. All right, so one question about your uh, your pickup configuration. Most dudes yes. playing metal um, are going, you know, with a P-style pickup. You got P and J set up. PJ set up. That's, you know what, because it's always worked for me. You know, my heroes have always, always PJ. used it. Yeah. PJ. So I, I grew up like that. I said, I want to do what they do. I want to sound like they do. Uh, and it was really important to me. So uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Totally. Right? And, and look, I'll listen to anything. But for these pickups that we have going for the AMG, we, we took a while to go back and forth for the right combination, which was right. There's a lot of output, specifically. Are they blood. active? Active. Active Sweet. pickups, very, very, I mean, everybody who tries it is just, it punches you. It's a punch in the face is what it really <laughs> is. And I like that. I mean, for this type of music, it really works. But people are also trying with different musics now. So um, I couldn't be happier with what I'm, my rig, my, my bass, what's going on. I'm very, very comfortable in my spot right now. Yeah. yeah. It's a good place to be. It's cool. So I would have to imagine that you're probably, instead of switching between the P and the J, riding it somewhere like a blend? All up front. Yeah. Everything's on. Everything's on. All for, on. For me, all on. Because I, for me, I grew up always knowing that your sound is your sound. You know, right. you just turn it all the way up. Uh, and the sound are in your fingers. All knobs you, to 11, dude. Yeah, you, you just, <laughs> just go to 11, right? So um, I've always been like that. So if I, look, if I ever need a little less, I could do you that. But it's, it back, it's yeah. always there. That's why there's only two knobs on this bass. Back and forth. That's it, man. So, so volume, volume, not even time, huh? Yeah, no, uh, because it, the tone should be there. there in my right, opinion, yeah. in my opinion, it should be there. So. I want to make it as simple as possible for the player, young and old. I sure. think it's really important. So you just go, have some fun, and that's what we're doing. So. That's that's awesome, man. Yeah, man. Cool that they're doing an import line too for younger guys and yeah, people so getting into people it. Yeah. I want I want to put a bass into everybody's hands. I think that's really important. That was me when I was young. I, I wasn't able to afford a custom shop bass. Sure. So uh, you you work your way up. You know, you you get the foreign model. I love it, and you know what? It's, Total quality. It's it's nobody's putting out junk here. Right. I can't. I won't put my name on that. So the, the the whole point is, give people a really quality quality product that really works and really you could really go far with it. I'm recording with that bass. I have recorded with that bass already. So you know it works. I'm I'm very very proud to put my name. So on even with the import model, if a kid was to um to to order it, does it also come with your signature uh, EMX? Or, uh, pickups, yes, yes, pickups? yes, they do. Cool. Yeah. That is not my base. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, uh, it, it looks like, you know, we're probably going to have to cut it short here in a minute, okay. but strings, gauges. The Adaria 105's down. 105's because, look, with this music, we all know we need some heaviness going up. I'm very comfortable with them. If I go heavier than them, it gets a little, it's, it's too much, a little a tight for me. It's a yeah. lot of work. I don't want to overdo it. Um, this 105s really stay exactly in my zone. I know if I go too light, it doesn't, doesn't work either, so I'm right. bending too much. Um, right now, the 105s, Dio Darius, they're doing me right. So I've been with them forever. So um, we're just happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're great strings. Yeah. I, I, I love seeing Charvel making a bass. That's fucking too cool. Charvel, and you know what? <laughs> we're, we're coming up, and I'm very proud to, to be the ambassador. They call me the ambassador. I'm fine with it because what I, an wanna, honor. I wanna give a good bass out there, and I think it's important. And that, yeah, it's their first run. And uh, we're doing, so far, pre-sales are pretty good, so I'm, yeah. I'm very happy That's awesome. with that. All right, well, as far as the rest of your rig, um, yeah. amp, you're like a, a real amp guy, right? I'm a real amp guy. Real amp guy, yeah. what do you got? I got my Harky um, LH-1000s, mm -hmm. which I've had forever. See, Harky's a small little company. that uh, Some people, the players know them, but um, I don't think they get the rep that they, they deserve because they're great. Um, home is where the Harky is. Yeah, home is where the Harky is. <laughs> Dude, you know, you, um, yeah, man, they, I've been with them forever. Uh, I have to say, they never go down. It's so rare that we have any problems any night. Um, so there's a, a lot of power, a thousand watts. Oh, there's, Jesus. There's, 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 there's no problems there. You know, I, I have, look at, look at, well, that's not my rig. I'm looking at, I'm looking at somebody else's rig. Um, I have the cabs, the 4x10s, they're awesome. Yeah. You know, they're, they're light as hell, but they're heavy as hell. The, 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 you know, the aluminum cones, it's just, everything's working really comfortably right now. So. Uh, again, my thing is, don't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And Good I've call. been with them for a long time, so between my rig I have going um, and uh, I have my I don't know if you've heard about my my pedal 
Welcome to Tech 21. Oh, I see. All right, so we actually got a look in the drawer. Okay. It's very prototypey, and it's there's no words on it. I don't no know what any of the it. switches do. But maybe you can enlighten us. I can't enlighten you. I can't. I can't name it yet because we finally. I think we have a name. I'm very happy about it. We've been working. Uh, I've been working with Tech 21. I've been a fan of this company since I was 15 years old in, in Manhattan on 48th Street, seeing Tech 21, that company. I said, what is that? And I found out what it was. Started using their pedals at Sansamp years ago. Dude, Sansamp is trying that, to That's the standard. Yeah. We all know it. So uh, I called them up one day. I said, look, you guys are interested in working together before I would talk to anybody else. Um, and they were, man. I had some ideas for a pedal, and I'm using it on. This is the first tour I'm using it. And everybody's coming over to it. I love that. When you know when you're just checking something out, everybody's like, what is that? What yeah, is yeah. that? That's the mark of something right. So um, I'm really excited about it. I think we have it to where I'm really happy. So uh, and now we're, we're in we're in post now. We're, we're gotcha. getting graphics and all that good stuff. So look for that. Could you possibly tell us if it's like a like a preamp pedal, a compression pedal, like what, what kind of? It'd be more like a Sans amp. It'd okay. Be, it'd be more like a Sans amp, like that vibe. My it'd be like a on steroids. Okay. On yeah, steroids, yeah, yeah. San, a Sans amp on steroids. Everything you like about a Sans amp, and then and some. Then I'm yeah. really excited. They're excited. Tech 21's really excited about it. And that's that goes a long way because those guys. They truly know their stuff. Man, they're great. Those yeah. things have saved my ass a couple of times on tour yeah. where our bass player's head blew up or some shit. Absolutely. Go direct with the Sans Amp. It sounds fucking we, pretty good. We always go, you always have that in the back of your mind that you could always go to the Sans Amp. So if you go down, it's right there yeah. for you. It's and like you a, know what it sounds like. Exactly. Yeah. That's your sound. Right. Let's totally. face it, that is our sound no matter what it is. And right. for metal, it's the sound. It's it's, it like is the, the sound. Thing. And you can get whatever you need out of it. A little less, a little more. It's always there for us. So it's awesome. It's, it's always been my go-to. Dude, you got all the cool shit. Dude, uh, I'm, I'm very content in what I have because uh, these companies that I, I trust. Right. Look, it's, uh, going on the road, you have to trust these companies. And I found all these years of the ones that really work for me, I'm using, and I still, you know, we're loyal to each other, and sure. that, that means a lot. Are you using any kind of modulation effects ever, or is it pretty much just balls to the walls? Balls basically? to the walls, and, you know, what Anthrax does is Anthrax does, you know, it's straight, it's meat yeah. and potatoes, it's, um, and, it's one yeah. of the things I love about your van. It's cool, yeah, yeah. so it's, it's fun, it's, it's not, a, not a lot of um, fanfare, you just yeah. do your job, yeah. yeah, that's really what it is, and that's what we do. Well, dude, Frank, can't tell you how much I appreciate you Great taking the time. Great rundown. Of course. Thank dude, you guys for having it's me. Been I'm a fan awesome of this rundown. stuff for forever. You right? know, this, so this is a, a pleasure to do. Thank you for having me very much. Thanks for uh, watching. I can't believe that you I watched, dude, I watched all awesome, this stuff. Man. Are you kidding me? What else is there to do on a tour bus? Right. Yeah. right. yeah. Good call. Good call. Well, you guys, uh, speaking of something to do on the tour bus, tell your drummers. We got a drum rundown. We got a magazine. You can subscribe to that. Have it sent right to your house. Uh, sign up for our newsletter. You can make sure that you're getting all of our bullshit that we're creating and putting out all the time. Please, that would really uh, help us out a lot. Help them out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.